Zino dambure nika, zino dambure nika, ne.
Amen. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We we'll open our Bibles to Revelation chapter um, 20. It's a service. Feel guilty and follow it up. And don't just it's okay. If you miss a service, follow online and um, get the blessing, lest you miss your blessing. Because sometimes we release something that is supposed to help you and you miss it. So if you happen to miss it because maybe you, you were busy or you had no data, follow it up and get your blessing for that day. Here the Bible says, Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have a right to the tree of life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for another privilege this side of eternity, Father, to come and hear from the throne, to come and submit our lives to be living sacrifices, to surrender everything to you, Father, until you mold us to the stature of a perfect man. As we preach the word, Father, may you take over with power and demonstration of your spirit to help your children in their today conditions, Father, to see the present tense uh, power of the risen Christ in our midst as it does the same works that he did. May you thunder forth your way to Lord Father and deliver the captives in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Right, you may be seated. I announce that this morning I will preach on our redemptive rights. That's what we'll be preaching on. And in the afternoon we'll start the preaching at 12. I had said in the afternoon we'll preach on I said in the afternoon we'll be preaching on the power of seasons. But there is a bit of change in the afternoon. I'll be taking a subject on unclogging spiritual channels. Right now, the, it says when we do the commandments of God, we have a right to the tree of life. It seems even in eternity, there are rights. If as a believer you don't know your rights, you may live under your privileged. Uh, you may live an underprivileged life. The, Bible, the, the prophet says, um, but now in the sevenfold book of seals, of redemption the lamb took with himself and was the only one who could do it he took it from the right hand of him that sat on the throne to claim his redemptive the rights 
um, to claim his rights, to claim for you and me. He redeemed us. Everything that Adam lost, he has redeemed it back to us. So he's talking about the redemptive rights. Seven seals, mysteries, the mysteries of God are also our redemptive rights. So we are living in the age of Laodicea, which Laodicea means the people's rights. So this age, people are after their rights. They are after their rights in every aspect. That there is litigation in every aspect. So in the spiritual also, people must be after their rights. Don't allow the devil to rob you of what belongs to you. Don't live a life suppressed because you don't know what was freely given to you. I'll read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 12. Um, now we have received not a spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things that are freely given to us by God, which things we speak also, not in, in words taught by human wisdom, but those taught by the spirit, uh, such, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Now, e e emphasizing there, it says, knowing things which are freely given to us by God. So, all the good things, the unsearchable riches that we have as Christians are freely given to us and they, they are our redemptive rights. Life is freely given to us. Salvation is freely given to us. Salvation is not a reward of a hard life. It's not a reward of your do's and don'ts, but it is freely given to you. You did not ask God to make a promise of the Holy Ghost to you. You did not ask him to go to the cross. It's not a result of your prayers that God had to go and die for you. Uh, but it is freely given to us. The Holy Ghost is freely given to us. The blessings are freely given to us. The message is freely given to us. The, even the, the benefits of this message, there is a benefit of being a believer. Believing the message is a full package. There are benefits in this life and in the life to come. Now, uh, even the promises are freely given to us. Our healing is freely given to us. Healing is children's food. When you, are, you have a sickness, you must know that healing is your redemptive right. You must claim it as your personal property. Forgiveness is freely given to us. The power for service is freely given us. Power to bind and unloose. Power even to speak things into existence. Even power uh, to, to bind demons. And the power to create, it is freely given to us. Our authority as a believer is freely given to us. Even the spiritual keys to unlock spiritual doors are freely given to us. We are given even a ministry of reconciliation. Our ministry is not to just push people away to the devil, but our ministry is to reconcile them, reconnect them to God, such that you can live a heavenly life on earth. Now we are given even the power of the world to come. It's already operating in us. And God can do super abundantly above what you can ask according to the power that is working in us. Even his presence is freely given to us. The presence of God is not a result of our hard life or a, a result of our holiness. It's a result of his amazing grace. Now, this message has made us what we have never imagined. Um, it has made us kings and priests. In other words, we are royal priesthood. We, we are already royal. The royal blood is in us. It has made us images for Christ, the billboards for Christ. Your life must make someone thirst to be a Christian. Even in silence, without words, without speaking anything, your life must influence somebody because of the radiant power of Christ operating in you. He has made us joint heirs with him. He has made us ambassadors with Christ. He has made us co-signatories. You are now co-signatory, like a, a, a wife is a co-signatory with the husband. The bride of Christ is joint heir with Christ. She is Mrs. Jesus. We, we, have, given, we have been given these things freely. We, we, we are made free by this message. We are made the bride of Christ and we are possessors of all things. That's why a Christian ought to rejoice every time. Because we possess life, we possess everlasting joy, we possess even redemption, we possess salvation. Even death is under our feet. Do you know that death cannot harm a Christian? Death cannot change you. It will only take you to your, to your place, your ought-to-be uh, place. 
So there are redemptive benefits for a believer. And that's why as redemptive blessings, there is divine protection. It's a redemptive blessing. A, a Christian is not afraid at night. He's not afraid of things that are, are destroying your clan and maybe what is happening around your family. You are immune to that because you are in another family. Your genetics are now imparted as heavenly genetics. So you are not afraid of witches, afraid of what? Actually, we as Christians, we love the witches. We want them to repent and be born again because there are people who are bound by a spirit that can be cast out. But we have power over that. We are not afraid of satanists. We are not afraid of rituals and things that can be done around you. But we are above that kingdom. We are in a, a higher kingdom. We have divine guidance as a benefit of redemption. We have divine providence. We have divine healing. That's why as a Christian, any person, whether you are a sister, brother, young, Sunday school or old, you have a right to pray and cast out devils. There is a sister who, who there's someone who was coming to the prayer line during the time of the prophet. And then as they were coming to the prayer line, someone noticed in the congregation the sickness. And they laid hands on that person before Prabhupada could. Just from the congregation. When the person came to the prophet, the prophet said, why should I do so? You are already healed. Someone has already prayed for you. In other words, there is no uh, the, the ministry uh, or the preachers are not repository. They don't have all the powers and the congregation is empty. But everyone has powers. It's your redemption right as a brother or as a sister to exercise the power of the spoken word. To exercise the power of the third pool. When things turn upside down in your life, it's your right to speak and things start happening. It's not the right that is given to the pulpit only. It's not given to certain gift holders only, but you have power and rights to address any life situation, to address any demon and say, not in my life. You tell the devil that not in my finances, get out Satan, not in my family, not in my children, not in my dreams. You have the right and the devil knows that you have the right. And do you know that the devil knows your rights more than you know your rights sometimes? That's why he's shivering. He knows that when you start knowing who you are, he has no chance in your life. Now, when it comes to the power of God, there is no summit to the power of God. We keep going higher and higher in blessings, in riches, in untapped resources, in unlimited supplies, in inexhaustible supply until you burst into angelic powers until you burst into the divine nature because we are partakers of the divine natures. All attributes of God are supposed to be operating, veiled in humanity. You should be God with skin on when God is hiding in you. It's your redemptive uh, rights. So, as a believer, you are too blessed to be stressed. That's why the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always. If you know what you have that cannot be taken by circumstances, you will rejoice even in the hardest circumstances because no matter how hard the circumstances, they cannot change the reality of your blessings. Your blessing is not circumstantial. Your, your, your promise or covenant is not conditional. We have an unconditional covenant. So conditions cannot alter the covenant. The, uh, the Abrahamic covenant is unconditional. It's not that Abraham was so clean and God called him. No. He was busy with idols. He was in a land that is filthy. He was among filthy people. There is nothing good, brother, that made us deserve salvation. It's just the predestination of God. And by that, we must be the happiest people. It's not your blessing is not based on your schooling and how you passed. It's not based on how you, what car you are driving, on what house you are living in, but it's based on whose child you are, in, on redemption that God has made you what you could not make yourself. Uh, by your abilities in the natural, there are things that you can make yourself, but in the spiritual, we can't make ourselves anything. We depend on the power of God. Now, now we have been even given power to impart eternal life. Those are benefits that you can actually impart eternal life to somebody. Because Jesus paid it all for us. No matter how sinful you are, no matter how stooped you are in sin, 
if you look to Jesus Christ and believe him as your savior and confess him to be, um, God will save you by his grace no matter how low you are in sickness, how bad you are. If God's servants, um, the doctor has given you up, um, with all he can do, you have, to ask, you have a right to accept Jesus as your healer and be made well. So it's not like the rights are with the pastor to lay hands on you, then you are healed. Healing rights lie in you right now. The rights to unlock your blessings are laying in you now. Now, as long as you are Abraham's children, God saw that he would confirm his covenant with you. I know some people are, think they are suffering because someone made an oath that you will never, never be blessed. Someone had to swear that this one will never achieve something. But God also had to swear and say, this one in blessing, I will bless you. So what men said is nothing. But what God says is what will stand in our life. You are his children and you have a right to these things. Do you know sometimes people are disarmed by a slanted gospel and they feel like they have no right to blessings in this life. There are some people who feel like if they are blessed, they may miss heaven. <laughs> and when they are looking for courts, they are looking for very hard courts that can take them to heaven. That makes them feel the pain. They say salvation is associated with some suffering. So they wouldn't uh, uh, accept anything like promotion or something the scriptures that are so good because they want to go to heaven. But it is your redemptive right to be blessed. Show me any man who was used by God, uh, uh, who was called by God, that he had no blessings of God on him. If you talk about Abraham, the Bible even says he was blessed in cattle, he had lands, he had everything. That is Abraham. If you talk of Peter also, after he had, Christ used his boat, he says, now launch, he had fish a lot. Those were prophets. If you talk of the prophet, when he said, I chose to be poor, you would tear a million dollar check. But when he left, he had millions to make this gospel go. He was driving a good car. So the, the gospel is a full package. What is not correct is to have a prosperity gospel and there is no salvation. And when we talk about redemptive rights, it's for those who are redeemed. If you are a sinner, you don't have these rights. You are not yet there if you are a sinner. As a sinner, you must seek salvation. You must repent of your sins, die to yourself, receive the Holy Spirit, be cleansed by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, and live a life worthy of the gospel. So these things of redemptive rights, that's why Paul writes more of that to the Ephesians because he speak, he says we speak to the, the wisdom of God to the perfect we don't speak those things to those who are not perfect but those who are still sinners they must repent you can't be blessed on a dirty life you can't be blessed when you are you are filthy living there is no blessing to a filthy person the greatest blessing you can have when you are filthy is the cleansing that is higher than material blessings I would rather have Jesus than all the silver and gold. Now, in, this is God's blessings and redemption blessing that Christ redeemed you from the curses. No man can curse you and it works. Balaam tried to curse the church, curse Israel, but how can you curse what God has blessed? Right? They, they are your privileges that you have. I don't understand how any person could preach the gospel without including healing because sickness is an attribute of sin. There is no way you can preach a full gospel without including the benefits of salvation, the benefits of the gospel. But now the secret to enjoy the benefits is that don't run after the gifts of it, but the giver. When you have the giver, the gifts will overflow. If you have the giver, have God first. If you have God in your life, if you have an experience with God in your life, you can then enjoy the blessings. Otherwise, if you just get divine healing and you don't have the divine healer himself, you, you, you always live a miserable life with the testimonies of touch from God, but without 
a, living an empty life, yet being touched from outside by God. Your heart condemns you um, not if you are a Christian. But if you are not a Christian, you live in condemnation. But if you are a Christian, you move from condemnation to commendation. Right? You have a right to every promise that God made in this book, in his book. It's yours, no matter how you are, what consequences uh, and what the outcome is. You don't look at that. You look at faith that God gave you the promise. Then it stands there. Nothing will move it. Every promise in the Bible must have someone who will take it violently by force. We, by redemption, we are now made candidates of association with angelic beings. Your, your company is now not just an earthly company. You are now having a heavenly association. You have a benefit of knowing all mysteries. Christ says, unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. By being friends with God, he says, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm going to do? God does not hide anything from you. If God cannot hide from Abraham what he's going to do in Sodom, what more what he's going to do in Abraham's life? If God didn't hide what is going to happen in Los Angeles, can he hide what is happening in your family to you? He will visit you maybe in a dream. He will visit you maybe in a sermon. He will visit you maybe in inspiration. God cannot hide things that are happening around you. Right. Um, one time I was standing here preaching about the blessings of God and I was saying, if God is so fast in performing, that as we are speaking is performing. And that service, something happened. And, and you know, I thought it was a disturbance. When I was busy making that statement, uh, Brother Matanga came <laughs> and he gave me a note that you are needed outside now. <laughs> there was an emergency outside. Um, so the people trapped with Brother Matanga outside. They said, hey, we need dog now. It was around 12 o'clock. They said, he must be out now. But I was preaching. So I read the note. I said, ah, but how did they allow such a note to come when I'm preaching? As I was preaching that, when we are preaching, God performs it. I, I said, okay, if this thing has God inside, if it is an emergency, they said there's an emergency. I said, God will take care of the emergency. I continued preaching. Then when I finished, I found there were doctors outside. They were now impatient. They said, there's a list. There are people who should benefit from properties. So you're, we wanted your name and ID. To put to that list. I said, you see, when you are preaching about blessings, they are waiting for you that very service. And they interrupt you that very service. I remembered what Brother Kumiso was saying about um, when a sister, he was preaching, then a sister came and said, and received a car. It was like, say, that missionaries want cars for their missionary. We come and take some missionaries. We stayed down. Then a sister ran and took the blessing. Oh, she was a sister. Because no one was taking it. Then, Brother Kumiso said, receive your car. Then, that service, when it ended, there was someone with keys who had come from far to give you a car. So, these blessings that we are talking about are hanging over you now. And they are a reality that you can benefit from. We see three crosses that were representing something when Christ was dying. There was one cross representing rebellion of one of the thieves. There was one cross representing repentance, which was the other thief. There was one cross representing redemption. So if you are in the rebellion state, rebelling against the Spirit of God, you have no benefit, but there is a penalty. If your life is not lining with the courts, if it's not lining with the Bible, you are facing a penalty. But when you repent, you start becoming a child of God. You, you now benefit from the seven redemptive names of God. They are redemptive blessings, they are redemptive names. Redemption is actually higher than salvation. Because redemption brings you to your ought to be condition, what you lost. I, you know that there are some people who are saved, but they are not yet redeemed. Uh, there, there will be even the foolish virgins, the those who remain in tribulation are people who are saved. Even the sheep and the goats that can be separated 
in the white throne judgment are people who shall be saved but the redeemed when they are gathering in those are the people who are put in their position so redemption makes you what you are born to be as a child of God so Jehovah Rapha Jehovah um, is your provider Jehovah, is, is your healer Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh is your, is your provider Jehovah Shalom is your peace Jehovah uh, Ra is always present is, is your shepherd uh, Jehovah Shama is, is there as an ever present one Jehovah Tzitkenu is your righteousness Jehovah Roy is your shepherd the, when he says I am it means whatever your situation demands God is what your situation demands anything that you meet there is a name of God that matches that situation that counters that situation he is everything to us now if you know this uh, there is someone there waiting for me someone that paid the price that I could not pray that's right he did it for me he did it for you he did it for the whole human race and now he comes forth to claim his redemptive rights to claim it for who not for himself he is the one he is one of us he is our kin's folk he is our kinsman redeemer he is a friend that is closer than a brother god is closer to you than your pastor he is closer to you than your wife than your husband there is a seat in your life that is uh, your husband cannot sit in where god sits there it is the highest seat of your life now every man here tonight if would, they would realize these things that you have got divine help and everything else god gave it to you at calvary every born again man is circumcised by the holy ghost and you have a right for every redemptive blessing and don't let the devil rob you out of it it means sometimes what is supposed to belong to you the devil has robbed you out of it you live an empty life when everything has been paid for you i remember the story that the prophet talks about of a woman who was living in poverty she thought the child the son was sending postcards so she was keeping those letters in the bible she didn't know that those that was money that was so she was living in poverty when the bible was loaded with the man loaded with blessings don't live in poverty when you are already loaded with the powers of god do you know as a child of god you have a right to call for a shutdown anytime if things are not moving in your life you you have a right to face the devil there are some people who say mm, i don't want to start a problem with the devil mm, what if it continues for a long time if you don't start a problem the problem is on the devil hates you for who you are so don't be afraid that mm, let me not fight these spirits what if they fight back if you don't fight they are actually possessing some people don't want to fight rats in the home because they know that if you put a red kill it may smell in the house but if you don't things are being eaten your, your things that belongs to you are being eaten by the enemy so you must declare oh the devil hates you so there is no way you can be friendly to him now if you are a christian you have a right a legal right for everything that christ died for it's your possession it's your own it's yours now the only thing that you can do uh, like abraham after he had endured a fight he, obje he obtained the promise satan just don't let you get it easily you've got to have faith you've got to believe it you've got to endure when we say the promises are yours you have to fight even canaan's land is yours but there are natures and there is habits that you have to fight as a believer for you to enter that land that is given to you you it won't be on a flowery bed of ease when god says this is yours you have your part to fight for it when people are fighting for their rights um, until even wrong people gays are fighting for their rights what about you fighting for what is your right today isaiah 41 verse 21 as a believer you have a right it says present your case says the lord bring forth your strong reasons 
says the king of Jacob. So you have a right to approach God and say, Lord, I don't understand why things are happening like this in my life. I don't understand why I'm trying to overcome, but I, I'm always down all the time. I don't understand why I've been praying for the Holy Ghost and I'm not receiving it. God will bring a reason why. God course was preaching when he was showing um, Rebecca asking that why am I there thus? She approached God and said, why is this thing happening this way? So you have a right to look for answers from God. To say, Lord, please help me. I want to understand why I've been praying for this for so long and it's not happening. There's one brother, he's a very good friend, he's a good brother. Um, I believe he's online listening now. He's in America. He, he sent me a message on WhatsApp. He says, I enjoyed the sermon when you were preaching the other day. Then you mentioned that if you don't get your result um, before the next service, um, phone me, let, uh, talk to me, see me, let's see why. He says, so I'm here now. <laughs> I thought today, that those are rights of a believer. If things are not happening, brother, don't ask you, don't pretend that it's moving. It's not moving. Look for answers. Uh, if the preacher says you are going to receive this and nothing happens, I phone the preacher and say, brother, that's why I'm here now. Nothing happened. Then we start scanning that. Mm, what is happening? Is it that we need more patience? Or oh, maybe there is a war that we must fight? Then we get to the bottom of the matter. Then for you to sit as if things are good, when things are bad, there are people who die seated in church. They, they, are, they are spiritually dead, but they are, they, are, they are just seated there and they don't want to trouble nobody. If things are not moving, make noise about it until something happens in your life. Now, we, we must possess your possession. You must claim every inch of ground that the devil stole from you. Look, if you have not been able to, to finish a spoken word book, if you have not been able to pray effectively, I'm not talking about five minutes, where you pray and you, you travel in the spirit. I'm not talking about a one hour or two hours, but an effective prayer, where you feel connected. If such things are not happening, you have a right to say, Lord, I'm dying. Don't just sit quietly when things are not right. You can backslide and be in church every day, but in a backslidden condition. You must be able to stand toe to toe with the enemy and say, Satan, bring back what has been stolen from me. Game is your legal right. As a believer, you have a, a unlimited access to the throne of God. Do you know that the devil is, is some form of access to the throne? Maybe today he, he went to the throne to accuse somebody. <laughs> because he accused the brethren before the throne. But then the accused one he has never appeared before the throne. The one who is being accused is absconding, he's not appearing before the throne. But the accuser is so active, he's back to God with your matter that the brother there is busy with things and you are saying he's your son. You must appear in court. You must appear and call your lawyer, call your advocate Jesus to say, Lord, I, I failed again. Then that is strength to rise from your failure. Because he says, um, If verily, verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall you do also. And greater works shall you do than this, because I go to my father. As a believer, you have a right to do the same works by the same anointing, by the same power, by the same word, by the same name of Jesus Christ. But if there are no works of faith in your life, you also have a right to say, Lord, why is my life so empty? Why is my life like that? It reminds me of that widow uh, in Luke chapter 18. She had to come to that wicked king and say, avenge me of my adversaries. Uh, she was bothering, but she had a right as a citizen to approach the king. Though the king was annoyed by her continual coming, she had a right to have a matter attended. So as a Christian, you have a right to present your case. Don't fear that will God answer me. He's going to answer you. You are a child. Now, you have a right to wrestle with the angel. 
he say, I will never leave you until you bless me. Amen. Daily there is something you must wrestle about at the throne. Don't be so smooth to God and afraid to say, Lord, maybe I will disturb you with this prayer. Speak to God as it is and say, Lord, I'm, I'm, I have no food at home. As long as you have started with the right thing, the first thing is to be a son. Then by being a son, you now have legal rights to approach God. But if your issue is that you are not yet a daughter of God, then start there. Die to yourself in repentance. Die to yourself until the very nature of God is transfused into you. Then at that time, the devil has no rights. But do you know that the devil has some rights at some point in the life of Christians? If you have unconfessed sin, the devil has a legal right to torment you. Because there are spiritual laws of operation of our lives. You cannot ask God to jump over his law. If you, have, if you have made a covenant with the devil and you are hiding his sins, you are hiding his things that belong to him, the devil can touch you because you have a covenant through the sins that are unconfessed. But the moment you confess that sin, no matter how bad it is, the moment it is under the blood of Jesus Christ, the devil has no legal right at that very second. You stand as a virtuous, sinless, justified, free child of God the moment you confess it to the sea of forgetfulness. So now you have an open check as a child of God to ask anything. Now, if you have not been asking, if I would ask you today that even for the last one week, what did you ask from God and what did you get from God? Because Christianity must have targets. And if you are asking and you don't know whether you got it or you are asking things that cannot be measured. So you don't know if you have it or not. You say, Lord, I give me good life. And you are thinking that whatever you have is the answer is good. But if you ask God, I'm asking one for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you will know when you get it. Two, I'm asking that give me a house. When you have it, you know that you now have the house. So now you have things that you can take. That God has given me this. He has given me that. If maybe you have temper. And you are saying, Lord, remove my temper. And now when you see kindness, you are thinking that something has happened. But if you have nothing to take, you cannot measure your blessings. But the Bible says... A hundredfold blessings. Christ says, those who have forsaken brothers and sisters and, and, and houses, and you, you shall have in this life a hundredfold. When you are talking of a hundredfold blessing, it's something that is it's not hundred percent, it's a hundred times. Hundred percent is twice. <laughs> it means it's double. Eh? You, are, you are blessed a hundred percent, like it's another. It makes it double, but this is a hundredfold. It means it is a hundred times. So we must see those blessings as Christians. When you see God in your life, there must be markers of his presence. The greatest blessing that I enjoy in my life is to feel the presence of God. That one can hold even in the absence of other blessings. The day you have no food, but you feel his presence, you may not even feel hungry. You may then even speak whatever you want. Christians have a habit of putting ahead what God shall do. They say in the squeeze, when we have no more food, we cannot buy ourselves, we shall speak the food. We shall. What are you doing now to show that we shall do that? There must be markers today that show that surely that will happen. You can't be failing your, your grade 7 and form 2 saying, when I get to A level, I'll get 15 points. <laughs> there must be something happening, marking that something will happen higher. There must be a lot of things dropping around you. Ruth had a blessing every time there was a sheep dropping before even the marriage with Boaz. From the day she met Boaz, before the actual marriage, Things started dropping around Ruth. So from the time you met God, 
things must start dropping a measure that has nothing to do with your effort that is supernaturally delivered to your doorstep now I like this hundredfold blessing Isaac sowed in the land in that land and received the same year a hundredfold the Lord blessed him so it's attainable there are examples of people in the Bible who have attained what you are desiring there are examples of people in the message who have attained what you are desiring so your desire is attainable with a cloud of witnesses that can prove that is possible the hour has come the hour has come for your church to rise this is the hour for for us to rise and shake um, shake herself from the dust and come to herself and realize positionally that she is the church of the living god and there's the right of every redemptive blessing that you promised her that is hers tonight the hour has come there is no hour that will come later the hour has come we are the people this is the time this is the promise this is the anointing this is the actual blessing that is coming the bible says the heir as long as he is a child differed not from a servant though he is a lord of all if you are not mature you may not know your right you may not know what has been freely given to you but if you are connected to the lifeline as a believer you are connected to the heavenly lifeline through this message you can swing over hell and get to your utopic condition when you are born again and the baptism of the holy spirit has come into your heart i, I think you should be you should not the validity of when when you are born again it means if you are not it's not so if you are not born again this is not your package at the moment but you must be born again to have this package new birth is something that no pastor can say you have attained it it's your it's a personal revelation of christ in your life no one can mark it and say today you are now upon again no god can give us hints to say mm, this something has happened to that sister but you yourself must know that something permanently has happened when you receive the holy spirit god can tell me that you have it but you must know better than me that you have it in other words no one can put you in no one can put you out no one can bring you in no one can take you out if, if you are baptized into the body you are forever it's forever settled the baptism of the holy spirit has come into your heart you have everything that you need for your journey the only thing you have to start drinking and pushing is the inexhaustible fountain of life and every man that is planted into him can drink and push out every redemptive blessing that god has promised it belongs to you it is your personal property and the devil he hasn't got any tie to it at all he hasn't got any legal right his rights were spoiled at calvary now by marriage there are conjugal rights a esther had a right even against the law of the patience she had a marital right though the law of the patients had not given her a right to approach the king anytime but the connection of hearts gave her a right when she appeared the law was no longer rightful but her connection with the king was rightful she was given a scepter so you as a child of god you have a scepter to control the happenings of your life the devil cannot control the happenings of your life family spirits cannot control the happenings of your life your past cannot control the happenings of your life but the dna of god and the soul life that is in you controls the outcome and your destiny is operating already in you now so esther had a right she could plead for her people the jews you have a right also to plead for your members of your family to come into the when esther she was applying the token for the jews when esther met the king when she was now made the queen she interceded for the jews you are also made a king and a priest intercede for your family you have a legal right to everything that jesus died for he died his death at the cross and gave his life that you might have legal right to every redemptive blessing that he died for it's yours you are just afraid to possess it 
You are afraid to claim it. Claim it. Some people are living a poor life because someone is using their blessings. I've seen in deliverance, I've met cruel demons. They manifest, they say, we cannot release this girl because she will be blessed. Many times I've heard demons saying that. It means that they are enjoying your blessing by keeping you in poverty. There are some demons that are enjoying. You may think it's humility not to prosper. It's not humility. It can be a demon possession. God has raised us to heavenly places in Christ. As long as you are in Christ, the first thing is to be in Christ. Then these other things are automatic. You are now in heavenly places. If you are in Christ, if Christ is in heavenly places, you are in heavenly places. You have a right, even if, even if you are a sinner, that is a, and you believe the gospel, you have a right to run to a city of refuge. You have a right if there is an avenger of blood. There are spirits that want to destroy your life. There are circumstances that want to destroy your life. You have a right to run to a city of refuge and hide there. We are hiding in Jesus Christ. So, God's elect cannot fall from grace. Because you did not climb to grace. There is no day where you started climbing into grace. Grace found you and picked you. You did not climb on grace, no. Grace picked you and it was unconditional love when God loved the unlovable. There is nothing you can do about it. God loves you and he cannot love you better because he loved you full blast. <laughs> he can bless you for doing more things but he loved you when you were a sinner before you repented because he knew there was a seed of representation in you. There was a gem of representation. Now, um, Joseph called the name of his firstborn Manasseh, saying, God has made me forget my toil. You see, God can make you forget the toils of the road. The second one, he named him Ephraim, because God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Here on earth we have afflictions, but you can be fruitful in the land of your affliction. You can be fruitful. If Joseph prospered in Egypt, because he was a son of prosperity. A son of prosperity, even if you take them to Somalia, they will prosper in Somalia. If you have a heavenly chin, even if you are in a life that is so hard, even if you are in an economy that is so hard, that prosperity will push forward. So, you can legally sue the devil as a child of God. You, can, you have a right to approach the courts of heaven anytime. If you believe and you are a believer, then you have rights to all redemptive blessings. When I say all, I mean all of them. Don't even sabotage yourself by not believing these things. A man is not qualified to stand before the platform or the pulpit until he has met God and had an experience with God. These are conditions for the rights. No person has a right to call themselves a Christian until first they had an experience with God. So what goes for first, brothers? You must have an experience with God. I'm not talking about something that the devil can make you doubt. There is an experience that is in a certain level that when problems come, you will, you will say, was that God? But I'm talking about an experience that is in a level where doubt cannot touch. That is the strength of Christians. The experience that we have, if it is beyond any argument, then there is no time of life that can make you doubt that experience. If you receive the Holy Spirit in a way that can be doubted, one day you will doubt that you received it. But if you received it in a way that is beyond question, when troubles come, when torments come, you will point the devil that that day something happened. Remember, God is not an Indian giver. When he gives you something, you are sealed unto the day of your redemption. The Holy Ghost is not from one revival to another, but it's unto the day of the rapture. Someone wrote a, a poem about the heavenly grocery store. He says, I dreamt that I was walking in the highway of life uh, some time ago. I believe today we'll be shopping in the heaven grocery store. You have a right to take what belongs to you. One day I saw a sign that read, 
heavens closer the store. I'm about to cross. Um, so he saw heaven closer the store. And I got a little closer, the door came wide open. It's good the doors are open today. So I got a little closer, and the door, I found myself standing inside. It's good that you are inside, and something can happen to you today. I saw a host of angels, and they were standing everywhere. We are standing on holy grounds, and there are angels all around. So they are ministering spirits. Uh, one handed me a basket and said, My child, shop with care. Today you have a basket in your hand. Are you going to go with an empty basket? No. Everything that a Christian needed was in that grocery store. Whatever you need as a Christian. What an unbeliever needs, maybe not there, but what a Christian. If you could not carry, you could come back for more. We have another service in the afternoon. If you could not carry, then you can come back for more. First, I got patience. Love was in the same row. In the heavenly grocery store, there are no empty shelves. Everything is packed with what you desire. Before you sit where you are dis- you're seated, God knew and he picked something for you for this service. He says, understanding was in that row, so you could get it. And I got a box or two of wisdom and a bag or two of faith. I couldn't miss the Holy Ghost, for he was all over the place. Never miss the Holy Ghost. If you happen to miss your healing, don't miss the Holy Ghost. If you happen to miss your financial blessing, don't miss the Holy Ghost. So I stopped to get some strength and courage so that I don't run into sin afterwards. And though my basket was getting full, I remembered to get grace. Amazing grace. Your, your cup will be full and running over. I didn't forget to get salvation because salvation is free. So I tried to get enough uh, for both me and you. When you get something, go and tell your boss that I have something here. I started to walk up to the counter to pay for the grocery bill. Then when I got to the counter, um, I thought I had everything I need to do my master's will. You need to have everything that is needed to what it takes for a Christian. So I went up, I saw prayer, and I just had to put it in. You see, in the grocery store, there are things that are by the till there that they know that these are appetizers. <laughs> I knew when I stepped outside, I would run into sin. So take the name of Jesus with you. When temptations round you, God, I breathe the whole name in prayer. So peace and joy were plentiful. They were on the last shelf. Some of the things, God puts them in the lower shelf so that you kneel down to take them. <laughs> Songs and praises were everywhere. And the angel says, I say to the angel, how much do I owe? The angel smiled and said, just take them everywhere you go. Take the name of Jesus with you. Then he wanted to be sure because it don't end the, the issue in doubtful matters. He says, he says, he smiled again and said, how much do I really owe? He wanted to know. Then the angel smiled again and said, my child, Jesus paid it all a long time ago. Now if it was paid a long time ago, why were we not having it? It's amnesia that was upon us. We must start having what was paid for us. You have boldness and a, a right, redemptive right to enter the holiest of holies anytime. They had no right like that in the Old Testament, but we have a right now. Now, I'll read this quote from Charles Page. I'm, I'm about to close. Uh, he says about the promises of God. He says, God's promises are not exhausted when they are fulfilled. When the promises are fulfilled, they are not exhausted. For when, when they are performed, they stand just as good as they did before. And we await the second accomplishment of them. Men's promises, even at their best, they are like a system that holds a temporary supply. But God's promises are as a fountain. They are never emptied. They are ever flowing. So when you draw from them, the whole uh, of that which is apparently contained, they shall still be as full as ever. Hence, it is that you frequently find every promise containing both the literal and spiritual meaning. He's saying, when the promises of God are fulfilled, they are not exhausted. That's why you find that the same sermon that I'm preaching now, if it blesses you, it's not yet empty. Someone will listen to this sermon after one year and it blesses them. The, 
the Bible verse that you read and it blessed you, it's not empty that verse. The next person who will read it will be blessed. The message that was preached in 1963 and it blessed the congregation, it is not exhausted. As long as you come to that same message, you will drain from El Shaddai. You is never empty. There's always something. A scripture that you read is never empty. You can go to that scripture for another blessing. Even a sermon that you listen to, you can listen to it again. It is never empty. It will bless you again. But he also says, to balance it, the Bible never gives um, never gives unrenewed human nature a good word never does it deserve it so there is no scripture in the bible that places an unrenewed human nature there is no right in the bible for a carnal nature scripture does not reward any carnality so if you are living in sin even if you are coming to the message there is no reward for you unless you repent so when you see your heavenly rights it makes you forfeit your earthly rights that's why as a lamb you forfeit your, your rights because there are higher rights things that are higher things that are nobler they've allowed your sight so we are leaving our rights to a life of of pleasure in this world because there is higher rights that we have seen in in this last day there's another people in the land the, the, that they under their message they will be the final voice to the final edge so the, we, the church has a right to be, as Mrs. Jesus to be the final voice to the final edge to him that overcometh I will grant him to sit at my throne even as I overcame and I sat with my father at his throne so we, the throne is the domi domain of rulership with Christ that is the right for a believer we have unlimited privileges of a believer you understand your divine rights divine privileges and one of the things that the prophet talks about he says Abraham, Adam he had courtship hmm. he says he lost his courtships when he lost that book so when that book comes what does it give us it gives us courtship a son of God is an amateur God you must exercise your redemption right you are living under your privilege uh, uh, your God given privilege you have a right tonight to enjoy full blessing of a full of all what the apostles had and what the early church has it remains in the church of Christ so when the blessings we have also so the trumpet of Jubilee is sounding to bring us back to our inheritance if you have sold out you went out to the world and you sinned you know that you answer once had an experience and you went and joined somewhere and can fellowship with the rest of them you done all these things I don't care what you have done if you are a son you have a right to return because it's jubilee time if you once experienced the power of God and maybe you have done something wrong today you have a right to return you have been truly baptized with the Holy Spirit you have taken the token to display you have a right to every redemptive blessing that God promised everything that is promised hold your token and wavering faith it's going to happen you can enforce any promise you have a right to force the devil to bring back what he has stolen from you as we stand to our feet you have a right to speak the word you have a right to claim what belongs to you when you are redeemed it's not for you alone it's for you and your house even Rahab though she was filthy when she displayed the scarlet coat it was not for Rahab only she says hey, where is my father where is my mother where are my sisters let them come under the token so your redemptive right is also to uh, impart life to others who don't have life when you have found the message bring others under the token when Ruth was married to Boaz, it meant everything that Boaz has, it now belongs to Ruth. When you are married to Christ, it means every power of heaven, it now belongs to you. The power for service, the power to bring things to, 
to manifestation, it belongs to you. That is your inalienable right. What the, the church had at Pentecost is the standard. It's an inalienable right. It belongs to you and there is no circumstance or condition that can alienate you from your right as a believer. So healing is your right. Your breakthrough is your right. Every redemptive blessing, if you believe it today, it's your right. So by faith, reach out in prayer as we close our eyes. Reach out to the promises. Reach out in the heavenly grocery store and start shopping, start getting whatever belongs to you. Whatever you are lacking in your life, you can receive it. Whatever you are desiring, God can give you. Whatever is lacking, whatever that emptiness, God can fill you. There is power here to fill every entitled person. Now, if you are a sinner, I commit you to God today. Repent thoroughly. Destroy the old past life. Destroy your habits. Destroy your desires of the flesh. Because carnality is enemy with God. If you are a backslider, I call you back to God again. Come back, my sister, if you are a backslider. Come back to the text. Come back to the message. Come back to the monastery. Come back to being one with God. Come back to your position in Christ. Come back to your relationship. If you know that your life has been empty, if you know that you have not been living life, if you know that you have been living a dirty life, come back, my brother. Do you know that your conscience tells you better? You know yourself in your conscience that though you are standing like a Christian here, you know that you are not a Christian. I would rather be an old-time Christian than anything that I know. Search for that. This is bigger than life. His loving kindness is greater than life. If you find that peace in you, it is greater than any tangible blessing. If you find that blessed assurance, I will pray with you. Our Heavenly Father, we approach you as sinners set by grace. We are failing to understand the mystery of grace, how when we are unlovable, you loved us. When there is nothing of our input, but your predestination made us who we are. Father, we pray that we will never take that grace and make it disgrace. But Father, help us to live a life worthy of the gospel. I'm praying for those who have fallen from grace. Those, Father, who are living a filthy life. May you help them. May you lift them by your hand, Father. Lift them out of the mighty cave. There is a chance for every sinner. There is a chance for every wayfaring man to find that precious hiding place. There is a chance for everyone that has a desire to receive the Holy Spirit. There is a chance for everyone that is dead to be cleansed by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, because I know there is a spiritual process already of redemption, that power of God. Father, when you could create a new race of human beings, but you, you came down from your glory to shed your blood, that sinless blood, blood to bring again your children back to their inheritance. I see the devil is robbing some of your children who are supposed to be rich spiritually. Who are supposed to be walking in the land and breath of their inheritance. Who are supposed to be counting their blessings, but they are counting their losses. They are counting, Father, even their unfavorable circumstances. I pray that there will be a change from henceforth. Satan, you are bound right now. You spirits of hell, you have no authority, you have no legal right in those who have profess the name of Jesus Christ. Those who have accepted this message, Satan, I disarm your arguments by the arguments of Calvary, by the blood of Jesus Christ. I say, come out of their lives in the name of Jesus. Let them be set free. Let them be redeemed. Let them be, let their chains break. Father, let your people, oh heavenly Father, let them see that life of redemption, that life of joy where they can be walking night and day, rejoicing, in their circumstances, knowing that there is He that holds our future, that there is someone who is greater than our circumstances, greater than what we are seeing. Father, I pray that the eyes of our understanding will be open to our vast inheritance, our vast territory, our unsearchable riches in Christ, our dominion as the bride of Christ, our spiritual equipment, our unlimited resources, our unsearchable and in, in five of Mabel, riches and powers of mercy that have been opened to us. Heavenly Father, I pray that by that, we can launch into a deeper life. We can launch into a life 
of fulfillment, a life, Father, that is worth the gospel. We are enriched by the message, by the text, by the books, by the spiritual food that is surrounding us. Father, may you help your people to desire to search their inheritance, to, to, to launch on Father and see what you have done for us, freely and given us. This very service, may you manifest your presence by healing the sick that are among us. Those who are sick, may they receive this very minute their healing by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ that is above all names, above the names of meningitis, above the names of arthritis, above the names of cancer, above the names of HIV. There is a name that is above every name, that is the name of Jesus Christ. By it, we pull down every stronghold and we say, by that work that is finished at Calvary, your children are free. May they exercise their authority in every direction of life, in their own place. Let them exercise their authority as redeemed sons of God. Let them have that unwavering faith. And if there be any condemnation in their hearts, if something is condemning them because of a sin that they have done, may they confess it. May they make it right. May they know that there is no more condemnation to them that are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. May they know that, Father, there is a crimson stream of blood. There is a power in the blood of Jesus that cleanses their past. Our past can never hold us because we are new creatures in Christ. We are dying to the old nature of sin. We are dying to our desires. We are dying to our sensual natures. But Father, we are rising anew, Father, in a freshness, a newness of spirit to live, Father, and walk in the spirit, led by the spirit, guided by the spirit, inspired by the spirit, and living a life that is from you, Lord Father. These riches are beyond explanation. We are rejoicing because this has been given freely to us. I bless your children. Some of them, Father, are looking for jobs. After In this time when many people are retrenched, in this time when people are losing jobs, may you give your children jobs. May you give them financial stability that they may be able to fulfill Father, all righteousness, that they may be able even to pay their tithes, Father, that they may be able even to support the ministry, that they may be able to keep their, their children, Father, to supply all the, their needs. Father, you say you will supply our needs according to your riches in glory. I'm praying for those who shall listen to this message even later. I'm praying for those who are listening even now. Father, those who are in the online land, may they feel your presence, may they feel your power touching them. While they are listening now, may your spirit fill them. I want to thank you for the many testimonies that are overflowing everywhere. It's your grace. It's that unmerited. We don't deserve these things, Father, but your love is beyond explanation. Your love for us, Father, we want to live a life that shows that we love you. A life that shows that, Father, we are fully committed to whatever you want in our lives. We give ourselves as living sacrifices to your will and to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We have come to the end of the service. Till we meet again, uh, our next preaching service will be at 12 o'clock. So, let's, if you are at home, just log in. Log in. It will be live. You can be on Zoom. You can be on Facebook. You can be on YouTube. Just enjoy the blessings. These are some of those things that are freely given to us. And when we have a chance to gather like this, let's use it. God bless you. We will sing as we dismiss. Right, the trustees are saying the offering.